My name's Scott Parker. Rock and roll saved my soul. Growing up during the 1980s in Southern California, I took comfort and feedback in power chords. My fate was sealed between the wax and the needle of the records that filled my room. I found refuge at the Cuckoo's Nest, Fender's Ballroom, and the Palladium. Along the way, I worked in a shoe warehouse with a member of Jane's Addiction, got high with Willie Nelson, and hopped a private jet to South America with Joan Jett and the Foo Fighters. My biggest reward for a life devoted to rock and roll is that I've become friends with some of the same artists whose music helped guide me through my youth. Now I get to sit down with these fellow rock and tours to tell our tales. This is my life. This is Death or Glory. Death or Glory. On this episode of Death or Glory, we're joined by founder of Amphetamine Reptile Records, Tom Hazelmeyer, and from the Melvins, King Buzzo. Get out of here, where would you go? Did I would go in? I mean, every, every time I've gone so far, great vacations or trips or, or whatever, every time I land back in LA, I'm like, oh, fuck, I'm glad you why are we doing this? You guys wait until we roll out or be come to Minnesota in January. Yeah. Done it. Not gonna do it again. St. Paul was found, it was called Pig's Eye. It was called Pig's Eye for ages until they decided to get all the way. St. Paul and Pig's Eye. Way better. That'd be awesome. Like, yeah, way better. Well, it's like the baseball team, you know, if it was the Siamese twins. <laughs> They'd sell way more stuff. On the baby, on the back of it. <laughs> It'd be amazing! Side show But no! Yeah. It'd be great. Well, they had the Vikings, that's it. Sorry, right. I can't remember his name. Yeah. Then they had the game. They lost the hockey team. They lost the hockey team. Somebody accused the owner of uh, either rape or sexual harassment. Yeah. His, his solution was like, fuck you, I'm moving to Dallas. <laughs> right, and he literally <laughs> took the team and yeah. moved to Dallas. There's a town that don't give a shit if I rape anybody. He kills the president down there, I'll be fine. I'm gonna table Florida right now. Florida. Florida sucks. I think they should just chop it off and let it sink into the ocean. Are you gonna take Texas along with that? Oh yeah, we just got down with Texas. Can I yeah. walk in on their interview or you guys? <laughs> A little bit, but it's fine. Are you being interviewed as it's I stand casual. here? It's pretty casual. Very casual. Yeah. Okay. In that case, so I'm going to do something good. very casual, and I'm going to take a go take a casual with Tom. What was this interview supposed to be about? It's not. It's supposed <laughs> to be about okay. exactly what it's about. language. <laughs> so do you want to talk about NREP, or do you just want to talk about pissing people off? Well, that's what we're always trying to do. Exactly. That's what drew me to NREP. That and the artwork and the packaging and everything, but that was designed to piss people off too. It's like, I, I remember being, when Dope Guns and Fucking the Street came out, and I, not only the artwork, but the title, I'm like, yeah, I would take one of those. I have no idea what's on it. Don't really give a fuck. You know, the book cover gives you an indicator. Right. I, you know, I think they ever did. Like the first time I saw a picture of, of, of Johnny Rotten, it's like, all right, I know I have to do this. Yeah. Like, uh, this guy's in outer fucking space. I have to do this. There's no way this is going to sound windy or or not be as fucking chaotic as I expected to. Right. I think it was more of an element of trying to piss off the people around us in the circle than outsiders. Because that was a given. It's like, I'm a pop church couple. That's easy to piss off. Yeah. I want to piss off that one rock kid. That's, That's also easy to do. What? Yeah. Especially now. A little, you know. They thought they were immune to it. Really? What about this? <laughs> Speaking of just pissing people off, how much of the Melvins in the beginning was that? That inspiration did? Or was it at all? Well, you know, we have a band name like the Melvins, how serious can it be? <laughs> I've seen you guys piss off entire stadiums. Uh, on purpose. Yeah. Massively successful. There was a stadium show we, I remember watching you guys do like 15 minutes straight. Oh, so, yeah. We did it. It was like, it was either 9 inches. I was a white zombie. White zombie year. What a kiss. They were all right because that audience was all, you know, credit card wielding adults who couldn't be bothered to like, oh God, I'm right, I'm right. They would just enjoy the beer and then they'll sit there and politely clap. You know, that was it. We did that for a while, you know, we were trying to sell the band by playing to somebody else's audience and it just we tired of that pretty fast. Let's see what these people are gonna like. I can't make that I just can't do it. You know, once in a while I'll agree with the general public about a, a band that sells millions of records or Hendrix or whoever, you know, so Queen. Right. But by and large, it doesn't ever happen. It's never happened. There's never been a golden era of music where I've just went, every single thing is amazing. This is great. No, it's because I don't think there's been a golden era of music that everything was amazing. My dad used to say to me, I, you know, I can't wait till you have kids and you, they get into all this weird 
shitty music you listen to, then you'll have to deal with it, blah, 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 and that might have an equal daughter. And it's not the stuff that she listens to that drives me insane is all the really pop stuff. Yeah, it's not weird like, at all. Oh, <laughs> darn! Oh, <laughs> like, no, I'm sitting there like, oh. I've got, I've got like a 19-year-old, 16-year-old. It's like, what drives me crazy is they, they never got went into the pop thing. What drives me nuts is it's 14th generation. It's a super watered-down version of the dam, or super, you know, throbbing wrestling or what even. It's like, that shit is crap, because it's diluted fucking shit, you know? I could hear every influence being great. <laughs> Here's an early, like, you know, industrial, like, Robbie Ripley. <laughs> <laughs> this is some kind of, you know, just like, that bothered me more. I would wish they would play something that changed me. That would make me go, what the fuck? Do you call that music? Right, right. Or something new. My oldest daughter was like, you know, what, yeah, but there's nothing left that can bother people anymore. Sure there is. Oh, yeah. Right. Oh, you and all your there friends? Is. Wear a bunch of brown shirts with leather strap. And everyone has matching haircuts. It look like, you know, little fascists. People freak the fuck out. Trust me. Trust me on this one. No. 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 There's no. a hundred ways you can freak people out. Yeah. You're just not fucking trying. Yeah. You're not, you're not with the effort. You're, you're not trying. trying. There's a Melvin's record come down. Yeah. Well, it's a gold record repackaged with a crazy, uh, like, art record. Yeah, the packaging's awesome. Yeah, it came up really good. Yeah, we've seen how far we can take that art back. The music's all free. Looks great. It's just totally fucking great. I enjoy that as well. Like, I can go find out anything from obscure 60s bands to some new band. Go, go get the music and have it in my car. Yeah, yeah, we'll drive on this that's, really that's cool. yeah. great. But on the other hand, it's like if you want that personal connection, then it's like something. you're making something, well, now it's becoming more of an art thing than it is. And there's some people that are confused by that. It's like, well, I want the record. Well, too bad. Yeah. The record isn't about music anymore. Like Spades said. That's a collecting well, thing. I mean, it's, it's like, go be understands better than us that millions of people won't care about this. Right. We know that. Right. <laughs> millions and millions of people do not give a shit. Right? Right. right. And, and you're not trying to make them give a shit. It's kind of like you playing the big shows. It's like, I'm not trying to convert these people. I'm just doing I'm trying to. I'm, I'm not trying to shove them away. Right. But I'm not trying to convert them either. It's just, it's just over it. Right. I was over it a long time ago. It's like, okay, I'm fine with that. We can make this work. And, and we're very realistic about it. We can do this kind of stuff and have it not go to a distributor, not go to a record store. And I would happily sell them to record stores if they want to buy them for the same price that we would sell them to anybody. But guess what? They don't want to do that. They, they want even, us to give them a deal on it. Right? They don't no. even call anyhow. Nothing. I went to a couple years ago. We were sitting in the hotel room every night, pulling together the CD packages for that night. Right. For each, one, each one had a stamp that said Chicago. There was 50 things, but we couldn't bring finished products. We had all the blank sleeves and stuff. We would sit in a room with the glue guns put them together for that show. And it's like, well, we're not going to do that and still sell you a $9 CD. Sorry, it's not right. fucking happening. And if there's 600 people there, we know that 50 of them will like something like this. That's our target audience. Right. You know, I don't yeah. care about uh, everybody there having a chance to buy it. Everybody there has a chance to hear it for free. It's free. <laughs> it is not what everyone's it's clamoring about a few years ago. Music should, should be free. It is free. It is free. And you're oh, still yeah, a bitch. Yeah, yeah that's <laughs> it. People just want to bitch. That's they want to bitch. And no matter how you twist it, they're going to bitch about the way you used to do it or the way you should have done it. Well, if you start giving away free beer here, pretty soon they'd be bitching because the glass wasn't right. right. <laughs> you're giving them the free beer. Right. Right. These glasses are too small. Right, right. right. It's not, that's not what small you're out of beer. They're ripping me off. I'm not coming here for free beer ever again. Yeah, you guys suck. <laughs> <laughs>